Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today we're gonna take a different look at the old battle, ATI versus NVIDIA. Now, of course, this battle rages on even today. We have AMD and NVIDIA constantly going back and forth. And in a recent video, you guys can check that out here, links will also be in the description below, I noticed that overwhelmingly the majority of PC gamers typically stick around the 199-ish dollar price point. Now I've mentioned that before on the channel and that's the reason why I wanted to start doing this series and kind of take a look back and see how these competitors have fared against each other throughout history. Who won which generations and by how much and how much has really changed over the past basically decade and a half. So we're going to start today by looking at who had the best mid-range 199-ish GPU in 2004. So stick around and check it out. Today's video is sponsored by Pulsed Media. Now, if you find that you need high-speed peer-to-peer data transfer at very, very affordable prices, these are the guys to check out. They have options to meet every budget, and right now they're offering all good old gamer viewers an additional 25% off. Now, this is a limited time option, so take advantage of this if you are in the need of these types of services. So don't wait, check the links in the description below. Now, on to the video. Starting things off, we're going to take a look at our two competitors. To kick things off, we're going to check out the ATI Radeon X700 Pro. This GPU came in at $179 at launch, and it's going to be going up against the NVIDIA GeForce 6600 GT. Now taking a little bit more detailed look at the specs, starting off with the GeForce 6600 GT, this released in August 12, 2004, at a price of $199. It has eight pixel shaders, three vertex shaders, eight texture mapping units, and four ROPs. You can see all the information up here, and later on, of course, you have shader modules and compute units. That's obviously not something we're looking at here today, as this is not a unified architecture, neither is the ATI card. Now, unlike modern GPUs, they do not have boost clocks, there's no shader clocks, just pure clock speed of 500 megahertz, and we had GDDR3 memory running at 1 gigahertz in 128-bit configuration. Now, most 6600 GTs were 128 megabytes. The model that I picked up, however, is a 256 gig version, because it happened to be the cheapest on eBay at the time, came with the retail packaging, and it's the XFX version, and it <laughs> looks the coolest out of all of them. So I had to go that route, plus it makes it a fair comparison as we will be comparing 256 to 256. Now this was produced on 110 nanometers. Yes, today we're quibbling over 14 nanometers versus 12 nanometers versus 7 nanometers. This thing's 110 nanometers in size. So relatively, yeah, these transistors are massive in comparison to what we have here today. Die size is very, very reasonable though, at only 150 millimeters squared. And the, this die size variance, this will come up later on when we look at more GPUs. Now, the Radeon X700 Pro, this launched a little bit later on, as they had the X600 actually competing with the 6600 GT, but realistically, that did not work out so well. So they had to come up with something else. The X600 was actually a rebrand of the 9800 series, so they had to come up with an, a new chip to actually compete with the G4 6600. So this launched March 1st, 2005. Now, unlike most of the other comparisons that we'll be doing in the future, this GPU actually came in at $179. There was supposed to be an X700 XT at the $199 price point, but this GPU just never actually came to market. So this is the best comparison that we have. So realistically, if this comes in at 10% slower than the 6600, that would still be a tie. So 
10% or greater the 6600 GT needs to be to make the value argument. Now looking at the core configuration, we have eight pixel pipelines, six vertex shaders, eight texture mapping units, and four ROPs. So this is actually a good bit higher than the 6600 GT. However, the 6600 does have a pretty good clock speed difference. We have only 425 megahertz on the core here and 860 megahertz on the GDDR3 memory. Also 128 bits, and by default, these all came in at 256 megabytes. The same 110 nanometer process and coming in at 156 millimeter squared. So relatively the same. So those are our competitors. Those are the deep dives. Now let's see how they compare. The way I decided to do this is pick one game, the biggest game from each year and continue to go up. So for 2004, that's going to be Half-Life. So I ran these at 720p, I ran no anti-aliasing, and this goes for all of the tests, and I used high settings. So if a game had ultra or something beyond high settings, I went ahead and reduced it to high. Now if the game only has like low, medium, and high, or maximum, or ultra, or whatever, basically something past medium and there's only one option, that's what I used instead. These are mainstream cards, and there's really no reason to be testing them at extremely ultra details because that's not what they're geared for. And most people in this price bracket are going to play games on high or medium or some combination of the two anyway, even today on modern graphics cards. The reason why I chose 720p is the big resolutions of the day were 1024 by 768 and 1280 by 1024. So 720p fits right in the middle of those two resolutions, so it simply makes sense for modern day testing. So as we can see here, we have an average frame rate on Half-Life 2 with the 6600 GT taking the lead at 40.5 frames per second in comparison to 36.8, and then 20.1 on the 1% low versus 16.9, and 18.5 on the 0.1% low against 13.6. So this is clearly in favor of the 6600 GT here. Moving on over to 2005, and we have Fear. Once again, same settings. Made sure to turn off soft shadows. If you guys were around back then, you know that that's a big deal. Um, they just had low, medium, and maximum. So went with maximum across the board, besides the shadows. Okay, so taking a look at the average frame rate, we're looking at 41.2 frames per second on the 6600 GT versus 29.1. The 1% lows coming in at 11.1 .1 frames per second in comparison to 9.5, not that big of a difference, and then 10.9 as compared to 8.1 on the 0.1% lows. For 2006, I chose the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Once again, same settings that we're using in all the rest of the tests. The 6600 GT came out at 21.8 frames per second on average in comparison to only 15. And yes, I had to play this game at this frame rate to do these benchmarks. It was a lot of fun. I will just tell you that. Okay, and even the 6600 GT was posting a 1% uh, low of only 12.7 frames per second, but that's in comparison to 7.3. And the 0.1% low of 7.2 in comparison to 5.9. So this is another big win for the 6600 GT. And of course, the most important game of them all, Can It Run Crisis? Well, let's see here. In 2007, Crisis redefined PC gaming benchmarks, and of course, we're going to use that for the 2007 test. Once again, same settings across the board. Key things to note here are we did run in DirectX 9, as these are DX9 cards, but I did also run it at 64-bit. Now this changes things up quite a lot. This was actually very surprising when I tested it out. The X700 Pro average comes in at 8.6 frames per second as compared to the 6600 GT's 2.6. So that is a gigantic win for the ATI card. The 0.1% lows coming in at 2.9 frames per second in comparison to 1.3, so that's better than double. And the 0.1 coming in at 1.4 frames per second Yes, that is awesome, by the way. <laughs> and that's comparing to 1.1 on the 6600 GT. For 2008, I chose Far Cry 2 as 
you know, you need a Far Cry game to test. And realistically, I didn't want every year to be using a Far Cry game, so I chose 2008 because honestly, there really are not a lot of really strong games that came out that year as far as benchmarking goes. This is definitely the best choice. Same settings as we had before, but as you can see, there are no numbers for the X700 Pro. Uh, anyway, this doesn't support it, and clearly this game needs some of those features on those newer DirectX versions. The 6600 GT, however, could run the game if you consider 6.1 frames per second running it. So, not really playable anyway, so not a big deal. And then on Arkham Asylum, that's what we're going to be using for 2009, same settings. Once again, could not run because it's just not advanced enough. It just was missing features that Batman requires to play. The 6600 GT could technically run it. Does a little bit better on average at 7.6 as compared to Far Cry 2. But once again, completely unplayable. So pretty much everything since Crisis is unplayable. And you could really argue that even Oblivion is a bit much for these 2004 mid-range graphics cards. Now, see, this is one of the things that really goes to demonstrate how different things are. You know, a mid-range graphics card from 2004 is completely useless just in 2006. Now, of course, you could probably lower everything to low and you could run the games. But, you know, two years later, these GPUs are already completely out of date. So to me, it's really interesting going back and taking a look at things like this. Now, putting it all into perspective, I went ahead and put the averages up. So... The average for the X700 Pro comes out to 22.38 frames per second with a 1% low average of 9.15 and a 0.1% low of 7.25. The 6600 GT comes in at 26.53 frames per second on average, 11.3 at the 1% low and 9.43 at the 0.1% low. So the difference between the 6600 GT and the X700 Pro comes out at for average, you get 19% faster overall, 23% faster at the 1% low, and 30% faster at the 0.1% low. So anywhere between 20 and 30% faster. Now, if you remember me saying earlier, you know, it costs 10% more, but it's also delivering 20 to 30% more performance. So this is very clearly the better buy of the two GPUs here. And this is mostly due to the fact that NVIDIA really did a good job on their 6000 series cards. And overall, I think the 6600 GT is probably the best card of the entire generation as it runs the highest memory clocks and the highest core clock. And realistically, for 200 bucks, this bad boy could run anything in 2004 just fine. So there you have it, a clear and decisive winner between the two GPUs, even factoring in the price difference. The GeForce 6600 GT absolutely was the better deal of that generation. And I remember that card being awesome. I had one back in the day in my second PC, and it was really, really good for the money. Uh, the X700 Pro, uh, while Valiant, and was a pretty decent deal. And if you caught it, you know, maybe $20 or $30 less, would definitely give the 6600 GT a run for its money. The biggest thing is, is the fact that I was using a 256 gig 6600 GT now, that may have skewed things on some of these more demanding games as it had that extra VRAM, but I did keep an eye on the VRAM uh, monitoring that, and most of the games, for the most part, did not really exceed 128 megabytes, and if they did, it wasn't by a whole lot anyway. So, overall, I think that this is a very fair comparison, and I found it really interesting to see how quickly these GPUs just kind of fell off the face of the earth. For the 2004 game, uh, Half-Life 2 and the 2005 game Fear, they both ran pretty well or acceptable. Fear was super demanding in 2005, so we're going to cut them a little bit of slack on that. But in 2006, once Oblivion came out, it was kind of game over. You need a new GPU. So that'd be like if you bought a uh, GTX 1060 and then you wanted to play games like this holiday season, it would just be like completely shitting the bed. It's actually really funny that that's what we used to expect from graphics cards. And this is the reason why a lot of older gamers typically want to upgrade every generation or every couple of years or every year or so because that's what we were used to. You know, graphics cards would just fall off real, real quick. You know, features 
in uh, newer games just wouldn't be supported by them because new features were coming out all the time. So it was really nice going back and taking a look at these games and the performance of these GPUs. I had a blast doing this. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Uh, do you remember these battles between these GPUs? Are you excited to see the next one, which would be the X1650 XT versus the GeForce 7600 GT at that 199 price point? Once again, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I had a lot of fun with this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really helps me out. And once again, today's video is sponsored by Pulsed Media. For those of you in need of a great peer-to-peer -peer server, this Finland-based company has amazing deals for you to take advantage of. Also, you can go ahead and sync up with Google Drive, S3, and other major services out there. Make sure to take advantage of the promo code, taking an additional 25% off these already amazing prices. For details, click the links in the description below. And that's really all I have for today, and I will catch you guys in the next video.